In the last lecture, we learned how to send a POST request to the server and save some data in the database. Now, in this lecture, let's learn how to fetch data from the database using a GET request. Let's go to VS Code and let's go ahead and let's create a private method. And let's call this method fetch products. And we need to create it inside the class. So after this on product create, let's go ahead and let's create this private method. And from within this method, we want to send a get request. For that, here we have this HTTP client instance. So let's access that. So let's say this dot HTTP. And on this, we have a method called get. And this get method is used to send a get request to the server. And here, if you notice, this get method has one mandatory argument, which is the URL. Now, from which URL do we want to get the data? We want to get the data from this URL because at this URL, at this endpoint, we have stored our data, right? So let's copy this and let's pass it to this get method. And rest of the parameters of this get method are optional. The first parameter is required and all other parameters are optional. All right. Now, this get method is also going to return an observable. So in order to get the response, we also need to subscribe to that observable. So here, let's go ahead and let's use this subscribe method. Let's move it to a separate line so that it will be more readable. And here to this subscribe method, let's pass a callback function. And in this callback function, we will receive the response. So let's create a parameter and let's call it response. And for now, let's simply go ahead and log this response. Okay. Now what I want is, I want to call this fetch products from ng on init method. So I will go ahead and create that ng on init method. And let's also implement its interface, which is on init. And from within this ng on init, let's go ahead and let's call this method. So here, let's say this dot fetch products. And why I'm calling this method inside this ng on init is because what we want is whenever the page loads, we want to display all the products which we have in the database in that page and i'm also going to create one more method and i will call this method on products fetch and from within this method also i'm going to call this method now this is going to be a public method with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and here you will notice that an object has been logged here if i expand this object here we have three data. So each of these data are nothing but the products. So this is the first product, this iPhone. This is the second product, this laptop. And this is the third product, this TV. And this data is coming from this database. So here also we have those three products. Okay. So in this way, we are making a get request to this server. And from the database, we are getting the list of products which we have in that database. All right. Now here, if you notice in this data, which we have received the response, which we have received, we have an object and in that object, these three values, which you see here, these are the properties and the value of these properties are again an object. Now, in order to use this data in the web page, we need to transform this data. Now, transforming of data can be done inside this subscribe method. And that should not be a problem, but it is a good practice to use observable operators for this purpose because it simply allows us to write cleaner code. So here to transform this data, what we can do is before this subscribe method, we can use the pipe method. And this pipe method allows us to transform the data before it reaches this subscribe method. Now inside this pipe method, we want to use the map operator and in order to use this map operator we need to import this map operator from rxjs slash operators okay now this map method takes a callback function 
So let's specify that using this arrow function syntax. And in this callback function, we are going to get a response. So the response which this get method is going to return. Now what we want is we want to transform this response. So here let's say for const key. So the key is the variable in this response. So basically here these values which you see these are the values which will be assigned to this key variable. Now here what do we want to do for each key? Let's first go ahead and let's create another variable. Let's call it products and initially it is going to be an empty array and for each iteration here what we want is we want to push the object for that key. So here for each of these key all right so we have lost that data but for each of those key we have an object assigned to it and we want to push that object in this array in this products array so here let's say products dot push then here what i'm going to do is i'm going to use curly braces and then i'm going to use spread operator and i'm going to use this spread operator on this response and for this response let's pass this key so what it will do is it will expand the properties of this response object with this key into individual properties and we are wrapping those individual properties inside this square bracket so basically we are creating another object from this object now why we are doing it like this that's because here we also want to have one more property called id and to this id we want to assign the value of this key so that we can use it later in deleting the data from the database or fetching the details of a given product using this unique id all right now before pushing this data in this product array what we also want to check is if the response has this key as its own property okay so here let's say response dot has own property and to this let's pass this key so if this response has this key value as its own property then only we want to push it to this product array if it is a property of a prototype or something else in that case we don't want to push that you know object in this product array that's why we have used this has own property let's use curly braces here and let's cut it from here and let's put it inside this if statement now here we have this error and to solve this error what we can do is in the tsconfig.json let's set this strict to false save the changes here and now this error should be gone let's close this file all right and finally let's return this products from this map operator and we need to return it from here okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now you will notice that here an array has been logged and the element of this array is objects and each object here represents a product and each product here has this description this product name price and it also has this id so the id which we are specifying here okay so in this way we have transformed the response now we can go ahead and use this transform data to display these products in the web page but before that let's also go ahead and let's create a model class so inside this app folder i am going to create a new folder i will call it model and inside this model i am going to create a products model so let's call it products.ts inside this let's create and export a class and let's call it product and this product is going to have these three properties so let me copy it from here let's move it to separate lines and it is also going to have an optional id property and to specify a property as optional we use this question mark okay and this id is also going to be of type string 
And now what we can do is we can go ahead and specify the type of these responses which we are getting here. So here this response is going to be of type an object and this object is going to have a key which is going to be of type string and that key is going to have a value and this value is going to be of type this product so let's specify that so product and in order to use this product we also need to import it okay so we can specify that type here or what we can also do is we can specify it on this get method so this get method is of generic type that means here after this get method using these angle brackets you can specify the type of response which this get method is going to return so let's copy this from here or i'll cut it from here and let's specify it inside this angle brackets with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page we should not have any error and we are still seeing the transformed data so here we have our three products which we have in this database okay and we can also specify the type of the response here when we are making a post request so here let me clear everything and let's go ahead and add a new product let's say the product name is samsung product description is samsung s3 and let's say price is 13.99 let's click on this add product now if you notice the response which we are receiving here is an object and this object has this name property and some string value for that name property so here the response which we are going to receive using this post method is going to be an object which will have a name property whose value will be of type string okay all right let's now see how we can display this data the data which we are receiving here the products which we are receiving here in this table so for that let's go ahead and let's create a property here let's call it all products and it is going to be of type products array and initially let's assign it with an empty array and then here where we are subscribing to the observable returned by this get method let's set this dot all products to this response so here this response is nothing but this products okay so instead of calling it response let's call it products let's copy this let's paste it here and let's also paste it here so this value will be the value returned by this map operator so this map method is going to return an observable and that observable is going to return this products and we are subscribing to that observable so here in this callback function we are going to receive this products which we are returning from this map operator okay and we are assigning that products to this all products property now you can see we have an error here all right so this should be product and not products so here let's save the changes let's go to our app component.html and let me first copy this property name which is all products and on this tr element let's go ahead and let's use ng for directive and here let's say let product of all products so here we want to display product name so this product is going to have a p name in the same way it is going to have a description and price and here we also want to display the row number so instead of calling it id the heading as id let's call it maybe number or pound and for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the index of the element so let's create an alias for it 
and here I want to display i plus 1. So the value of i will start from 0, but I want to display the row numbers from 1. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And now you can see all the four products which we have in our database. So in this database, that is being displayed here. If we go ahead and add a new product, let's say washing machine, and let's provide a description, and let's specify the price, and let's click on this add product. So a new product has been added in the database, but here it is not displayed. It will be displayed when we reload the page. So now it is displaying all those five products. So what I'm also going to do is here after the table, let me copy this, this button element. And after this table, let's also add a button. And here let's call it fetch product. And on this, let's bind click event. And to this click event, let's go ahead and let's call this on products fetch method. Okay, now what this on products fetch method is doing? It is simply calling this fetch products method, this private method where we are making the get request. All right, so let's go back to our web page and we should have a button element here. Let me close this. Okay, let's go ahead and let's create a new product. And let's click on this add product. So that product will be added in the database. Let's see that. So here you can see that product has been added in the database. Now let's click on this fetch product button. And you will notice that now it is displaying all those six products which we have in this database. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.